Hey gang, Lou here from JSF. All right, so we're back on the 66 Mustang. And, uh, well, it's time to give this girl a little ass. So what do I mean? Well, let's put the back end of the car together. So here's everything. Let me catch you up on everything that's going on. The centerpiece for where the gas tank supports are, the trunk for, uh, I just have that loosely tacked in right now. The frame rails have been repaired. Uh, there was some rot on them where the flanges are, so uh, I actually showed the owner of the car how to do that. He did the majority of the work, and I gotta tell you, he didn't do a bad job. Not bad for a first timer. Uh, so now where we're at is getting everything centered, squared, and making sure it's gonna be right when all the sheet metal goes on. Now, there was a couple little issues uh, that I was running into but I think I have workarounds for them. Uh, as you can see, it's no longer a walkthrough car. Okay, this is uh, just screwed in place. All right, put everything together with self-tapping screws first before you weld. That way you got room for adjustment. Kind of move things around. So one of the interesting things that happen when you cut a car apart is everything kind of springs in an opposite direction. So outside, I have a more or less unmolested 66 coupe. And first thing I had to do was measure between the rails. When I first put this in, it was way out. So I got my measurement, and then I used a ratcheting tie strap, pulled the frame rails together, uh, got the inside measurements to where they are on the 66, uh, which for anybody paying attention is 41 and 3 eighths. Um, and then amazingly enough, this slid right into place. Now, the inside flanges meet right up with the frame rails. Okay, and just a couple sheet metal screws holding everything together. So I'm quite happy with that. Now there's two little issues that I have to contend with. I'm not exactly sure how. On the passenger side of the car, we have the rear cross member, and this is the end of the original quarter panel here. You can see how this is like that. On this side, on the driver's side, well, this kind of sits in too far. And if you look down there, there's still a gap between here and here. And I really can't push this any further forward. So that is a little bit of a concern. Now what I did, because again, everything's cut apart on the car, there's really no points of reference. So what I did is I took what we didn't touch on the car. So what that would be is from here. Now this part here I cut out if you remember. Um, and then I welded this back in. It still has to be dressed. But from here to here. And then same thing. The inside here. So here, measurements are the same, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm not even out an eighth of an inch. They're exactly the same. Now, according to the Ford book, the, bo the body manual, an eighth is acceptable, okay? We're trying to get a little closer than that. Now, the other thing I wanted to measure for was that it's level, okay? Because my floor in here is not level, not by any stretch of the imagination, one of these days I may build a, a frame table, but not today. So the only other point of reference I have to go off of is the deck lid. So if I measure from the bottom of the deck lid down to here, and then same thing over here, I measure from this to this, I'm off by three eighths of an inch. So how am I gonna overcome that? Well, before I weld a single thing in, that's why I measure, okay? If I just push down, I don't know if you could see that, but everything's kind of moving. And what seems to be holding me up on this side is actually the frame shackle. Sorry. Uh, is actually the frame shackle here. So I have the axle suspended it's just hanging on by the springs. There's no support underneath it. And amazingly enough, when I jack the axle up, 
this whole thing goes up a good three quarters of an inch. So I feel that there's still room to move. So what my plan is, is I'm going to take out the U-bolts for the rear axle and see if this will pull down. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll pull the shackle and take all the tension off of it and then I can move it exactly where I want. Now, your next question is going to be, how are you going to get it to stay there? Glad you asked. When the tail, the tail panel goes on, the tail panel is going to weld on from here down to here. All right. And that should hold it. Now, the other thing that I'm fighting as far as not being able to hold things in place is simply that, well, the whole quarter panel here, nothing's attached, everything is rotted. So when that all gets welded back in, then that'll lock this in place. So now, let me put my theory to the test. Let me get the, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take out the U-bolts, uh, and then I'll take out the shackles here. Because, you know, we still have a chance of the spring being attached and still giving us a hard time. Even, you know, we can't put any more weight down on the spring because the axle's already sitting on it, right? So the only thing I could do from there is just push that down. It's not a matter of bringing the quarter panel up. Like I said, from here to there, that's where I'm measuring from. So let me go ahead and screw around with that and see if we can get this to move. Okay, so here's what I've gone and done. Uh, I disconnected the leaf spring over here. That's completely loose. Um, I have a ratchet strap pulling the frame down that's secured to the axle over there. Now, here's where taking the time to do the adjustments makes everything good. Um, and you have to trust your measurements. Now, like I said, nothing in this shop is level. Nothing. All right. So you have to rely on your tape. There's a little tip. This is just a little cheap, I don't know, dollar store, Home Depot, Harbor Freight measuring tape. Whatever tape you use to start measuring with, that's the one you use for the entire project, or at least for the project that you're working on at the time, okay? Because we've seen videos where people have laid out tapes and, you know, they're off. You know, an inch does not equal an inch by every manufacturer. So, as long as the measurements are the same, it doesn't matter what the measurement is. You know, it could be 35 and a half on this tape, it could be 36 on another tape. It doesn't matter, okay? You, you, you follow me? So, you start with a tape, you finish with a tape. Now, that being said, let's see the tail of the tape. So, with that pulled down, again, I don't have a whole lot of places to, uh, for, well, actually I do, have good points of reference but from this inside corner right here because I didn't cut that I'm at 36 and a quarter exactly from this inside measurement to here I'm at 36 and a quarter exactly we know that that part's right on the rear frame rails where the bushing is for the rear shackle, there's reinforcement plates. If I go from the inside of the reinforcement plate, I'm at 35 and a half. Sorry about that. I'm at 35 and 7 sixteenths, so it's a sixteenth of an inch off. So we know that this way is level to where the deck lid is going to close, okay? And I didn't remove the deck lid quarters, so we still have a good gap. Still have a good gap. All right, now, the other thing that we want to make sure is that everything is square. So again, if I go from the inside here to the outside of the rear cross member,
56 and 5 eighths. Same thing from the inside there, the outside here. Fifty-six and five. Inches. Now we know that this is level and it's square to the car. Again, everything else around you is irrelevant. Okay. Now, <laughs> funny thing is, is if I measure from the floor, it's out almost three quarters of an inch. If I measure from the floor, that's why I'm not using the floor. So now at this point, I'm ready to weld this guy in. Once this guy goes in, then we can worry about the trunk pans and everything else. Before I get too crazy with that, okay, and again, this is where you want to start moving things around and checking uh, to see that everything's going to line up. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put the tail pan on here, make sure that that's going to fit, make sure when the trunk closes that, you know, it's a nice even gap all the way across, all right? I still have some metal work to do in here. Uh, but that's all easy stuff. Uh, my main goal right now is to get the back of the car structurally sound again uh, because we've got to take the axle out so that that can be rebuilt and painted and uh, got a lot of cool things I'm going to be throwing at this car. We got four-wheel disc brakes that have to go on back here, but it's a little bit down the road. Uh, so before I do the inner wheel wells, before I do the quarters, anything like that, we're just going to start back here. So let me grab the tail pan. All right, so now with the tail pan just sitting here. There's no clamps, there's no screws, nothing. It's just sitting here. This is a, uh, an original Ford tooling replacement pan. If you're going to do a project like this, if they're still available, get one. All right, now this is August, uh, I'm sorry, September of 2020. Um, there are limited stocks of these, uh, but uh, National Parts Depot, CJ's Pony Parts, they have the original Ford tooling ones. The other aftermarket ones are garbage. Don't even bother, don't try it. Unless you're just cutting out sections to put in, you're going to be very unhappy because they're not going to fit over the trunk rail here. They're not going to have that curve, right? You know how the Mustang has that little curve in the back here? It's not going to have that, all right? Uh, it's just going to fit like garbage. Now that that PSA is out of the way. So the first thing I notice when I put this on is that the taillight screw holes on this side line up for the most part. On this side, the quarter panel has to be pushed in. You can see where the original braze joint was here. This side, I'm just about on the original braze joint. Now, down here, we have these other holes for the balance and all that stuff. Everything is shifted over this way a bit. So it may not be a matter of that quarter panel has to come this way that quarter panel may have to go that way. So let me give that a little push and see if it moves everything over. Not even a little bit. Now that should go there. Screw holes line up there. Ah, look at that. Everything lines up. If I pull that down, the reveal of the cross member is just about level all the way across. So, grab a handy dandy vice grip here. Just to hold that. And then, let's see. Okay, that could stand to go up a little bit, but again, it's just clamped in place. But just for dropping it on the car, 
quite happy with the way it fits. Let's try this a different way. Okay, so I don't know. Well, I started today off with a scribe. But I don't know if it picks up on camera, but these screw holes here are now lined up perfectly. Like I said, we got this right where we need it. We'll shut the trunk. And we still have a good gap here. This is quarter pound, may need some adjustment. The overhang of the deck lid to the tail panel here looks great. Tail panel has that curve, follows it. The uh, gas tank and the trunk latch are pretty much centered with each other. So, I would call that a win. That looks, to me, that looks great. And then the other thing we want to look for. Is with the bumper support brackets. That side's going to be a little funky because I have the tie down there, but those holes are there. Those holes are just about there, but that's easy enough. We can open up the holes, elongate the holes. That's not a big deal. So, that's it. Now, just a couple of minutes of tweaking things around, moving things around. I've got great fitment back here. So, at this point, I can actually start fitting in the actual trunk pans themselves. And I'm going to keep this in place just so that everything stays kind of where I need it. Okay, so looking inside the trunk, the passenger side floor pan fits good up around the wheel well, the rusted original wheel well. Fits great to the original uh, trunk pan that was there. Now I know it some of you are going to say, oh man, there was rust on there. Yeah, we're going to be cutting that out and re redoing it, but I didn't want to replace this whole panel back here because it gets up underneath the support for the convertible top, and no thank you, please. Uh, back here, everything fits pretty good. I'm going to manipulate the metal a little bit to get it to sit down where I want, but it's there. Now, the driver's side here, a little bit of a different story. This has got to go way forward, and right now what it looks like is that the wheel well is in the way. Now, when we chopped out the wheel well, I know that we bent some of the metal, and that's probably what's holding me up. But, looking at the curve of the original pan here that I'm shaking, and what's there for the new panel, is we're going to be okay. I just got to get that to move forward a little bit. So, I'm going to... Go ahead and do that, get that set down, and then I'll screw the trunk pans to the frame rails, mark them for where they need to be drilled for the spot welds. Okay, but that's pretty much sitting down on top of there. If I take my finger and go along the bottom, the flanges feel flat, so... And I'll see when I get anything to market, but they should be fitting exactly the way I want. Okay, we got that done. Okay, so at this point, the piece along the back, that's the gas tank support. Uh, I cut the ends off uh, pretty far. Welded in new metal, everything's ready to go. Uh, to round down the whole trunk area and under the car is getting done in body color Raptor liner. So I'm not really concerned about making the welds disappear. Uh, we don't need that back here. So now the big, mm -hmm. the big thing that we that I gotta do. I gotta put a ratchet strap across here to hold this together. I gotta take out the screws that are holding in the cross member, prep the metal to weld the cross member on, uh, and then weld that on. Once that's welded on, I can go ahead and start 
uh, my final fitment of the trunk pans. So, let's see how this goes. Okay, so that's that part. Explored apart like I thought it was gonna. So <clears throat> at this point, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and replace these pieces of metal that are on the end because they're looking kind of thin, and I have to put in some pretty heavy spot welds, uh, plug welds, to. Hold the cross member in the back of the car. Remember, this is the strength of the car here. So this isn't the time to get chintzy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out, make new ones, weld them in, and um, get to it. And okay, people, so <clears throat> here's where we're at. I fit the trunk pans to the car. I uh, had to move some things around. So what you'll see is a series of ratchet straps under the car and a jack now like I said there's nothing square on this car to really measure off of and even when I try to measure diagonally across this way uh, it's out by almost three quarters of an inch which tells me that there's something going on that the frame rails themselves may be in different places I'm not sure I don't know um, but I know if I pull it that way that it's supposed to that it wants to go things get <clears throat> really bad but let me show you where i'm at so the surfaces have been prepped all my welding most of my welding repairs have been done back there welding repairs on top of the frame were done okay um i still have to go back and finish welding that seam right up there not a big deal um so what i did is I just clamped the tail panel in place and with the quarters loose you may be asking well how do you know where it goes and it's simple this panel can't move okay so we have two holes here for the headlight uh, for the taillight buckets so all I did was move the quarter panel to where they line up put a clamp there and I did the same thing on this side okay put a clamp here follow me easy enough right now, where things started getting kind of weird on me was that this frame rail was sitting lower than that frame rail. So there's a jack underneath there to push that up because when we come down here and we look at the reveal from the tail pan to the cross member, all right, you can see that, well, it's even now, but before this was way up here. Okay, now the cross member is welded in. It's not going anyplace. All right, I got my spot welds there, spot welds on the inside, same thing on the other end. Now, how do I know that I'm in the ballpark of where I need to be? Again, very simple, the bumper brackets. So they're just laid in there. You can see the bumper brackets are pretty much centered right in the holes for the tail panel. So I know I'm in the right neighborhood. Now, instinct would tell me that this needs to go up to here but if I do that, now this is all too high and, well, nothing's going to really match where it's supposed to. The other thing I had to do, I have that ratchet strap there, pulling the back of the car this way so that these reliefs that are here for the, believe it or not, these are for the license plate bolts, uh, so that they match up. So now I know the back of the car is as centered as it can be. And the same thing when I shut the trunk. The uh, keyhole and the gas tank are just about centered. Again, I have a 66 original car outside. They're not centered exactly either. Gap on that side. 
gap on that side. Now in the back of this one, it gets a little tight, but again, that's that can be moved around. So all in all, I'm happy with the fitment. Now, what I'm not happy with, so I have the uh, owner of the car here, and he's been helping. He's been doing a great job uh, busting out spot welds, getting pieces that we're going to be saving, uh, and helping me out to move this thing along. So you can see on that trunk pan, yes, I put copper weld on the bottom too. Might as well. And there's a lot of holes in it. Well, as uh, Mark, the owner, said, it makes up for the fact that the original, that the other pans they took out were never welded in. So, and there's a lot of holes. I said that. This just in from the Department of Redundancy Department. All right, so here's what I'm not happy with. SEM copper weld. The stuff's $25, $30 a can. I expect it to work. However, and you can see the nozzle is not clogged, right? But when I spray it, it kind of stops on its own like that. For $40 a can, this ought to work every single time. So, SEM, I'm going to be tagging you if any of you guys see this. Um, fix it. You know, this stuff ain't cheap. So, I'm just going to finish. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to do that against my plasma. So I'm going to finish spraying this. I'm going to lay the pans back in. I'll come back after that. Show you where everything is. How nice everything fits. i got to tell you, I'm, I'm really really happy with how all these curves on this panel fit the car and the repair panels I did. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick is, and this is why you spend the money for the better parts. Got this flange here, right? This is the original quarter panel. Look how nice that fits. So a couple holes in here for spot welds, done. And then of course we got the screws that go along the back that screw uh, <clears throat> this and the balance panel, I believe, to the cross member. Uh, so I'm going to mark where those holes are on the tail panel uh, and then be able to drill the holes for those. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get the pans reinstalled, uh, show you where I'm at with that as far as the fitment, and then I've got a whole bunch of welding to do. All right, you guys, so you're going crazy doing welding. You see, this is still in place. We got one trunk pan in. I'm finishing up this one, and even though they fit good, there's still some manipulation that needs to be done. That's where this old friend comes in. So I'm doing all my plug welds, rosette welds. And I've been kind of jumping around from one side to the other, just out of boredom. It's not going to work, but just to do a different set of holes, if you will. So, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. Take off my glasses, because I need like four visions. say this, this isn't exactly comfortable. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I do, a lot of people do, is I'll use sheet metal screws. to draw two pieces of metal together. So those gotta 
come out and the hole's got to get and the hole's got to get welded. Keep on forgetting you guys are all the way up there. I'm all the way down here. Now, not all the times with rosette welds does it go perfect. Sometimes the sheet metal, like in my case, I'm welding probably about uh, 18 gauge down to 16 or 14 gauge on the frame rails. Uh, so because this is thinner, well, it'll burn before it actually welds. So you gotta go back and fill things in. Not a big deal. Sometimes we gotta tweak it. Okay, so now that I got this back piece done, uh, see I'm putting in a million tack welds. It's because you can't really just go to town sheet metal. Something I'm on fire. I was about to say something's on fire. It's me. Wife is gonna feel away with that because I'm oh, just off camera I happen to have a pretty good welding jacket. All right, guys, that actually wraps up everything in the back of the car. Okay, so inside the trunk, everything is done, wrapped up, <clears throat> ready to go. So last thing I need to do is I need to weld the cross member to the inside of the trunk pants here. Now, the back of the car is welded together. All right, guys, there you go. Baby's got back, I just got her back, back. Whatever, I, I don't listen to that music, but I know it's something to do with a song. So, <clears throat> what's happened? We've manipulated the frame, got things square, made sure our measurements are square to the car. We have nothing else to level off of, so we have to go square to the car. We did stitch welding, we did tack welding, we did plug or rosette welding, uh, fitted sheet metal. The sheet metal fit in there real nice, fit in there real neutral, it's the way I like to do things. Uh, I don't like to have to move metal a whole lot because, well, it ends up having problems later on down the road. Uh, yeah, so next time we come back, I'll be cleaning up the edges of these quarter panels. Uh, this, these flanges, both sides, well, when I say clean up, I mean recreating. Um, and then the tail panel can go on and get welded on. I'm not going to screw anything in because I want to wait for the balance panel to get here. See how close it is to line up with these holes, see if we got to move the back of the car anymore. Not that I think it's going to move anymore. So, all in all, I'm, I'm happy with it. No. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe so they keep up to date to our, with our shenanigans. If you're a current subscriber, I want to say thank you. And if you're a new subscriber, again, 
thank you. Uh, it helps us to grow the channel. That's what I'm trying to do here. Got any questions, comments, leave them below in the comment section. Uh, I try to answer them fairly quickly. If you want to roast me about anything, go ahead and roast me about anything. I personally don't care. Uh, you know, as I've said a hundred times before, this is not a how-to channel. It's a how I do channel. And how you do may be different than what I do. But the principles are still the same. Square, level, take the time. All right, this isn't a rushed process. It takes as long as it takes. That's all there is to it. So again, we're just moving metal around. We're not splitting atoms. Well, again, thanks for hanging out. Until we see you next time, peace.